make it non-linear. Let me introduce the detail. Let's consider three different models. Model one, for example, log income over education. Education right here is a continuous variable, right? So, so we, we have alpha, we have beta. By the way, by the by the way, still remember how to interpret the beta for the coefficient education, where education is a continuous variable. How to interpret the beta right here? Let me help you start. If education increases by one year, right? Then beta will be for math. Beta will be change in log income, right? <laughs> beta is change in log income, as we learned before. Change in log is percentage change, right? That's why beta is the percentage change in income, right? That's actually this is our model two we learned before midterm, right? Our model two is log y over x, right? So beta is the percentage change in income whenever your education increases by one year. Right? This is our model one. So income, log income or education. This is our model one. Model two. Uh, now we put one more variable, BC. BC is a dummy variable, blue collar worker or not. And talk about worker type. We have two types, blue collar workers and white collar workers, right? So we have a dummy variable, BC stands for blue collar workers, right? The omitted group will be our benchmark, which is a white collar workers, right? So we have two variables, dummy variable BC and the continuous variable education, right? So right here, again, let's review. How to interpret the coefficient of beta two? The way to interpret beta two should be the same as right here, right? So for example, suppose suppose beta one and beta two, both of them are 0 0.8. Then, then beta two, the way to interpret beta two will be again, whenever education increase by one year, 0 0.8 will be the percentage change in income, right? Which is uh, of course 80%, right? That's the coefficient for continuous variable. Right here. A dummy variable BC, how to interpret uh, suppose beta 1 is also 0 0.8, 0 0.8, right? Then how do we interpret 0 0.8? Actually, we don't, right? <laughs> For dummy variable, we should, this is log y or dummy variable, right? We should use a formula e to power beta minus 1, do the calculation, and then interpret. Right? <laughs> so, so that's why basically suppose both of them are the same 0 0.8, but uh, we interpret the two differently, right? For the continuous variable, you can directly use a 0 0.8, which is 80%. But for dummy variable coefficient right here, you have to use the formula E to the power beta minus one, right? But for model two, let's consider this, uh, discuss this in detail. Now, BC is a zero one dummy variable, right? Let's use our old trick to, to plug in BC to be zero, plug in BC to be one to figure this out. So the first case, when BC is a zero, let's plug in zero right here. Our model reduces to, you know, alpha plus beta one times zero plus beta two education, right? In other words, when BC is a zero, this term, beta one term is gone. Right, so our model reduces to right here. We don't have a beta one and then for the for the first case when BC is a zero. Right, BC is a zero. It means blue collar worker is false. Right, one is true, zero is false. Blue collar worker is false. In other in other words, this worker is not a blue collar worker. In other words, this guy is a white collar worker. Right, so for Basically, this equation is for white collar worker. This is a relationship between income and education, right? This is for, again, white collar workers. Let's do the same trick for BC is a zero. Let's plug in BC is a zero right here. Then we plug in BC is, uh, so sorry, plug in BC is one right here. So if you plug in one, this model, very simple, reduces to alpha plus beta one times one plus beta two times education, right? So 
So our model right here, beta alpha plus beta one plus beta two education, right? So beta alpha, beta one, they two, both of them are constant numbers. So let's put the two together. So, so now the second model, this is for the case BC is one. In other words, it is true. It is a blue collar worker, right? So for 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 you know for blue collar worker, the relationship our model reduces to log income equals to the coefficient education still beta two, still beta two, which is the same as right here, right? But the intercept now is alpha plus beta one. Beforewards for the first group, intercept is alpha, but the second group intercept is alpha plus beta one, right? So imagine we have two cases. In a second, I, I'll show you the graph. Basically, for the, for the two cases, BC is zero, BC is one, basically we have parallel lines, right? The slope of education, exactly the same, beta two, beta two, but the intercept, they're different. One of them intercept is alpha only, right? The other one is alpha plus beta one, right? So that for the two cases, in this model, you know, we have two parallel lines, the same slope, but different intercept, right? That This is our model two. Again, our model two, we include a dummy variable BC. So, so that we just figure out by including a dummy variable, basically we allow intercept to change, right? When your BC, this guy turns on, turns off, then plug in zero or one, right? Intercept will be either, you know, alpha only or alpha plus beta one, right? So when it's on and off, actually intercept, we allow to be different, right? So again, remember this. When we include a dummy variable in our regression, we allow intercept to change, right? Including dummy variable, we allow intercept to change. But the slope right here is still the same, right? This is our model two. Let's move on to model three. This is a uh, this is the most complicated model. See, in our model three, we have beta one times BC plus beta two times education, and finally beta three uh, times BC times education. In other words, compared to model two, we just introduced right now model three. We further introduced the uh, inter interaction term BC times education, right? Dummy variable times continuous variable, right? So let's figure out model three by using our old trick, plug in zero and one, right? Plug in zero, one to figure out the two cases. Very simple. First case, first case, when BC is a zero, plug in zero here, plug in zero here, right? We have BC and a BC right here. So Beta one disappear, beta three also disappear, right? So our model reduces to log income equals to beta two times education only, right? This is the case BC is a zero, the first case. The second case when BC is one, let's plug in one and one right here, right? So very simple, you know, this is really simple math. So our model reduces to alpha plus beta one plus beta two education, plus beta three times one times education, right? So that's why, you know, our model is right here, right? See beta one times one right here, beta one times one, right? Beta three times times one times education. See beta three times one times education, right? So our model, let's collect the similar terms. Our intercept will be alpha plus beta one, right? This is our intercept. The slope, see, beta two education, beta three education. So let's collect the two together. The coefficient education is beta two plus beta three, right? So, so for model three, again, we figure out two cases, the first case and the second case, right? Let's compare these two cases. Now the slope, beta two only, or beta two plus beta three, right? In model three, the slopes could be could be you know also different, right? Intercept either alpha only or alpha plus beta one, right? We also allow intercept to be different. So model three so far is the most general model. We allow intercept to be different between two cases. The slopes also we allow to be different between cases, right? So that's why 
model three is the most general model, most flexible model, right? Or you can say the most correct model because we allow everything to be different, right? So right here, let's see. By including a BC dummy variable only, as we just introduced, we then turns on or off, plug in zero or one. We allow intercept to be either alpha only or alpha plus beta one, right? That's the usage of the BC only, dummy variable only, right? When we include, when we include BC times education, again, when BC on or off, uh, zero or one, right? So the, the education term will be either beta two education or beta two plus beta three education, right? So the slope of education also to be, be allowed to be different on or off, right? So that's the usage of uh, interaction term, BC times education. We allow the slope of education to be different between BC group or non-BC group, right? So, so let's summarize a little bit so far. So far we figured out by including a dummy variable BC, we allow, we allow intercept to be different. Right, on off. So that intercept of either alpha or alpha plus beta one, right? So when including BC times education, we allow the slope of education to be beta two only or beta two plus beta three, right? So that's the usage of uh, each term. So that the more terms you put right to there, the more flexible the model you know, becomes, right? So let's run. Let's run by using a data set. Let's run these three different models and compare them. And uh, we can do the exercise of uh, our F test. Uh, let me show you the computer uh, codes by, from R. Uh, I use a data set. Uh, actually, this is our old data set. Did I introduce this before? Duncan data set uh, within CR package. So I've already loaded the data set as on the first. So this part, very quickly, I create my variable, BC dummy variable zero one, because beforewards, beforewards uh, there are more than one types so that I just uh, code into zero or one to make it simple. Um, log income, I, I just uh, create my log income uh, variable. Beforewards, I only have income. So I do a log transformation. I calculate log income. Now, first of all, let me show you this command. The command beforewards, we learned uh, something like this, plot y squiggle x, right? We learned this command, plot y squiggle x. Now we make this uh, command a little bit uh, different. We put a bar and we put a bc, and uh, this is code plot. What does this mean? In other words, let's check out the result so that you figure this out very easily. We want to see, let's plot y over x by groups of uh, BC. You see, right here, we have two graphs right here, left hand side, right hand side. The left hand side graph corresponding to BC is a zero. Right hand side graph is BC equals to one. So that basically, Basically, we plot two graphs very quickly, you know, together, right? Of course, if you like, you can plot the first, plot a graph for the first group, plot another group graph for the second group, so that, and then you put the two side by side to compare, right? That's how it should be equivalent. But right here, I made it, made it a little bit faster by using the command coplot, right? Coplot y squiggle x by bc, right? So it's a nice command. So the graph looked like this. The left hand side is log income over education. This is for BC equals to zero. BC equals to zero. Zero means false, right? Not blue color workers. In other words, left hand side, these are white color workers, right? So that you can see education, they're kind of high because we have most of the issues right here, right? Their income also, also high. Basically, most of our evaluation located at the right up corner right here, right? Which makes sense because uh, white collar workers, so they, 
most of them they sit in the office so that their there's you know their income is kind of high right so that most of them maybe they they got uh, high education right so so that's why they become a white collar worker right so that that's why most of them located right here high and a high in terms of income right hand side graph actually we also you know, raise the same way. Horizontal line is also education, 20, 40, 60, so on so forth. This is a, um, uh, this must be an index. I don't think this is 100 years education. This must be, must be index between zero to 100. So our Y is a log income. So the right-hand side graph also read this way, very similar to the left-hand side of one. So you can see right-hand side, this is BC equals to one. In other words, these are for blue collar workers, right? As you can see, their education, they're kind of, uh, compared to white collar workers, their education kind of low because uh, their education, they're most of them below 40, right? Before words, white collar worker, actually most of them more than 40, right? So that's why, Right hand side, blue collar workers, so their education, most of them kind of low. Talk about their income. There is a variation. Some of them high, some of them low, you know, it varies, right? <laughs> but their location, they're kind of different. If you put the two in the same graph, the right upper corner, those are white collar workers, right? And the blue collar workers, are there, uh, you know, left hand side, uh, up and down, right? Something like this, right? So basically, that's the corresponding graph. Uh, so far, let's run some regression model. This is my model one. Let's ignore blue collar worker, white collar worker. Let's pull everybody to together to run the regression model, log income, our education. And we summarize our model one. Let's see. We got the coefficient 0 0.018. So let's do the exercise, right? This is a log income or education. Suppose suppose X is really how many years education, right? So 0 0.018, the sentence will be, if education increases by one year, right? And 0 0.018, this is the change in log income, right? Change in log is percentage change, right? So percentage change in income is 0 0.018, which basically 1.8%, right? That's the little exercise, right? So, so, so this is the result when we put everybody together so that uh, we ignore blue collar worker, white collar worker, right? So, uh, let's check out model two. Model two, now log income or BC plus education. I have two variables, dummy variable and uh, education continuous variable, right? Right here is the coefficient. Coefficient for dummy variable is negative uh, 0 0.53, which is negative. Negative means if you are a blue collar worker, then your income will be lower, right? Which makes sense. In other words, it shows blue collar workers, their wage will be lower than white collar workers, right? So how to interpret this, this coefficient, the negative uh, 0 0.53? Still remember? Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, Wait. Almost. <laughs> Right, <laughs> I'm trying to trick you guys. <laughs> Don't forget, BC is a dummy variable, right? So actually for education right here, we can interpret directly. We can interpret it directly, which is uh, the education increase by one year. This number is a percentage change income, which is uh, uh, 0 0.01, which is uh, 1.0, basically 1%. Right, one percent. Uh, before words, before in model one, it's one point eight percent, almost two percent, right? But in model one, model two, almost a half, only only one point zero, only one percent, right? So model two, we already get a much smaller, you know, coefficient of education. But go back to dummy variable BC. This number negative zero point fifty three. Again, since this is dummy variable. 
we cannot interpret directly. We have to use a formula e to power this number and then minus one, right? <laughs> so calculate on the result and they interpret, for example, let's do it uh, very quickly. You can use a command exp, which is e to power, right? And uh, let's just uh, copy and paste this number. Uh, e to power beta minus one. This is a negative uh, 0 0.41, 0 0.41 something, right? Slightly different from before. Before it is a 0.53, but after some calculation, actually it's a 0.41, right? So we got a number right here. This number is really the percentage change, right? So between a blue collar worker, white collar worker, the percentage change in their income is a 0 0.41. In other words, 41%, right? In other words, blue collar workers, their income is a 41% lower than, than the, the other group, than, than white collar workers, right? And that's the calculation and also that's the interpretation, right? You see, <laughs> these are very good exercises. So we, we can combine, we can review everything we learned before. Now, model three. Model three. Model three, we include log income or BC education, BC times education, right here, time, make sure you type a little star. Uh, you know, a star is on your keyboard is on number eight, right? The star means a multiply, BC times education, right? So let's check out the result. Uh, beta one, beta two, beta three. So first of all, how, how to interpret these uh, directly? It's kind of hard because first of all, first of all, for, for the two groups, we know the way to interpret those three results. Do you remember the theory? It's two groups. For the first group is alpha plus beta two education, right? This is for the group BC is a zero. We got such a relationship, right? And for the second group, if BC is one, this is a corresponding relationship, right? So that's why if you want to figure out what's the impact education to log income. So depends, depends on we are talking about first group or second group, right? The first group, the coefficient of beta two only. Second group is beta two plus beta three, right? So let's do the exercise uh, in, in right here. Beta two is right here, 0 0.005, right? So th this is our beta two, okay? Beta two, we're talking about the, in the first case. Then BC is a zero, beta two is a coefficient right here, right? So for the first group, for white collar workers, white collar workers, beta two is the percentage change when education increases by one year, you know, beta two is a percentage change in income, right? So in our example, beta two is 0 0.005, right? And this is very small, 0 0.005. In other words, uh, in terms of percentage, it's 0.5%. Right, zero point five percent. Right, this is uh, the result for for the first group, white collar group. Right, the percentage change is very small. How about the second group? The second group right here, the coefficient is beta two plus beta three. Right, go back to our computer result. Beta two right here, beta three right here. Right, first of all, let's calculate the summation beta two plus beta three. Uh, actually, let's let's use a computer. Beta two plus beta three. So the summation of, of the two is a zero point zero four, right? That's the result. Zero point zero four is right here. This guy, right? So what's beta two plus beta three? This is a percentage change for. Blue collar workers, right? For blue collar workers, then your education increases by one year, then this number is the percentage change in your income, right? We just calculated beta two plus beta three is 0 .0 0 0.04, right? So that the percentage change is, put two decimals, 4.0%.
four percent, right? So, you know, for the first group, zero point five percent, very small, half of a percent, zero point five percent, right? For the second group, four percent, right? Very large. So we got totally different results, right? So. So those are the exercises of how to interpret these numbers, the groups, so on and so forth. But let's take a closer look. The uh, I provide the, the you know the commands to plot their uh, graphs. Uh, let me directly use the the graphs in my in my lecture notes to show. This is the uh, fitted line for model one because. For model one, we ignore blue color worker, white color worker. We don't care. We put everybody together, right? So that we got a coefficient. The coefficient is uh, uh, 0 0.02, basically. That's a slope, right? 0 0.02, you know, 0 0.018, basically 0 0.02, right? <laughs> this is a slope for the for, for model one. Model two. As I told you, you know, we have two parallel lines. By including dummy variable BC, we allow intercept to change, right? We allow intercept to vary between white, white color worker, blue color worker. The blue line corresponding to blue color worker, right? That's that's a you know the reason why you use the blue color, blue color, <laughs> stand for blue color worker, right? The the other one. The, the green line <laughs> stands for white color workers because I cannot draw a white line. <laughs> so that's why I use that green line to stand for white color workers, right? So in model two, I have two parallel lines, right? The the slope exactly the same, but the, the intercept to be to be different. That's all my model two, right? The slope for both of them, the slope are there's my result. The slope, both of them, the slope is uh, 0 0.01, right? It's flatter compared to model one. Both of them, they're kind of flatter. Before it's 0 0.018, but now both of them flatter, right? 0 0.01. Finally, model three. Model three is the corresponding fitted line right here. In model three, we allow intercept to be different between groups. We also allow slopes to be different between groups, right? So that we got two totally different. So how did I draw these lines? Recall from theory, one of them intercept is alpha. The other one intercept is alpha plus beta one, right? But for slope, one of them slope is beta two. The other one is a beta two plus beta three, right? Basically, I just figure out the, the numbers from, from, from my computer output, from my computer output, right? This is my alpha, beta one, beta two, beta three, right? By using these numbers, I just plug in, plug in my formulas right here. Plug in my formulas right here, my alpha, beta two, or alpha plus beta one, beta two plus beta three, right? So I just plug in these numbers so that I figure out what's their corresponding intercept slope, intercept slope, right? So that I, I have their corresponding uh, fitted lines like this. So let's take a closer look. For blue color workers, actually the, the slope is much bigger. It's much steeper, right? Because the calculated slope is, let's see, for blue color workers, we turn this on, right? Turn this on. The slope is beta two plus beta three. So the summation basically is 0 0.04, right? So the slope is much bigger, very steep. The other group, the other group turns this guy to be off, right? So the, the coefficient for education is a 0 0.005, very small, very flat, almost a zero, right? So that's why, that's why for one of them, the slope is almost a zero, 0 0.005, right? All really, really flat. The other one really steep, right? 0 0.4. So let's let's check out their intuition. The first one is for blue color worker. The regression right here shows if you are a blue color worker, actually, then you increase your education. The impact to your wage is actually very big, increase sharply. Right, <laughs> that's that's the finding from our regression results. The blue line is for blue color workers. Why? 
the intuition could be, you know, talk about blue collar workers. Most of them, their, their education is they're kind of low, right? So that's why, you know, compared to your coworkers, compared to your peers, right? If you increase your education, you're much better than your than other guys. So that uh, you you got to raise very quickly if you get increase your education. If you're better than other guys, right? But for white collar workers, still remember most of them located this corner, right? So that so that you know most of them their ed education is kind of high, right? But for them, you know, when you increase your education, actually the impact will be small, much smaller. It's zero point zero zero five, almost the flat, right? So right here, from this example, it shows blue collar workers, white collar workers. In this example, they're kind of apples and oranges, right? <laughs> they're totally different. So that if you ignore the difference, for example, no matter in the model one, model two, especially model one, if you ignore the difference, just put everybody together, you, you got to the coefficient, still remember, 0 0.018, right? About 0 0.002. Which this number is between between the two slopes. Right here, the slope, one of them is almost zero. The, the other one is almost 0 0.04, right? If you ignore the difference, if you put everything together, roughly speaking, you got the slope 0 0.02, right? So it's kind of in between zero and 0 0.04, right? But unfortunately, the number in between 0 0.02 is wrong. It's wrong for both groups. You under impact the, the impact for blue collar workers because for blue collar workers, impact education is much bigger, right? Very large. And you also you also overestimate impact for white collar workers because for white collar workers, the impact is very small, almost zero, right? So that's why if you put everything together, you got a number kind of in the middle, right? The number in the middle actually is wrong for both groups, right? You overestimate for one group, you underestimate for the other group, right? Uh, again, you can now say something like my positive mistakes canceled out with my negative mistakes, so I'm perfect correct. No, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, right? So short answer is uh, actually, if, if you ignore them, if you put everything together, you are wrong everywhere. You are wrong for, 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 for both groups. If you want to get to the the correct result, you have to separate them. You, you have to, you know, allow intercept and slow both of them to, to be different, right? <laughs> so that you can recover the truth. That's the that's the detail. Right here, actually, this graph, this example, actually, to me, is a really, really nice way, easy, simple way for you guys to think about your dissertation, to think about your dissertation. In other words, very often in reality, if you run regression, for example, you know, if you if you pull two groups together, you probably get a result in somewhere in between, right? That's probably you know what happened in, in most of you know regression result. But if you separate into two groups, for example, could it be male, female, could it be black, white, could it be, for example, if you talk about firms. Profit firms, non-profit firms, right? If you talk about schools, some of them might be in urban area, some of them might be in suburb area, right? So if you talk about in the industry, some of them could be leaders, some of them could be followers, right? There could be many, many different ways for you to separate into two groups, right? And very often, actually, the impact of X to Y will be different, will be different between groups. So. If you check out those uh, published per paper, if you check out, for example, you know, if you if you have an advisor, if you check out advisor's paper, if uh, you, if that paper interests you, you know, <laughs> how can you further improve that paper? Just to think about if you can figure out a way to separate two groups, right? Especially if if your intuition tells you, you know, between these two groups, I would suspect that the impact will be totally different between groups, such as such as profit firm, non-profit firm, right? Or it could be something like, for example, in accounting. They, for, let's say, for example, every year, uh, those audit firm, they, they issue a letter to you to remind you, you know, your performance is, uh, you know, good or bad, right? Uh, either way, if you perform good, then they may not issue a letter to you at all. So you can, you can separate two groups, either 
you re receive a letter or do, didn't receive a letter, right? So basically, you know, based on what happened before, you can you can compare the the performance of these two groups, right? So so you know, very often, trust me, you're gonna find totally different results. And if you find the result different, the results between groups, congratulations! Just write down your results and you know, write, make a table. So write down your results and send to a journal. That's your publication. To me, that's an easy, quick way for you to, to, to do your own research. Very simple, very easy. Especially if the previous paper published in a top journal. So if that paper are already published in top journal, you're, you're trying to say something like, uh, that paper is wrong. Let me tell you the truth, right? So <laughs> if your advisor doesn't want to, you know, doesn't like this kind of paper criticize of you know, his or her paper, you, 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 you can add him or her as your co-author so that you <laughs> improve, you know, right? <laughs> so that, you know, you know, write an even better results, right? So that's why to me, that's um, easy, quick way to further improve your, to, to find your <laughs> research topic to find, you know, results. Trust me, I, before I uh, helped many students, for example, in accounting and finance, they, uh, I helped them with their dissertation. Many of them, actually, they just uh, discussed that uh, difference between groups. For example, some firms, they are, uh, they're managed team. They are, uh, most of them, they could be male owned. Some managed team, some of them, most of them are, could be could be female. They try to figure out if this kind of percentage of, uh, for example, female manager, you know, does it make a difference, right? Or sometimes they figure out, for, for example, say your managed team, how many of them, the, their culture, for example, origin from, say, Asia, from, from uh, America, from uh, so, so, does it matter? So, of course. They also try to figure out the different groups, such as uh, uh, they call something like a fault line. So fault line means uh, in your managed, managed, uh, management team, such as, for example, they count to those CEO, managers, and so forth. So they are, for example, are they something like all of them are male, or all of them are white. All of them may be from, maybe graduated from uh, Ivy League, <laughs> right? So, or maybe everybody kind of different. One of them black, the other one white, the one of them male, they are females. Uh, so they try to discuss a case, this kind of combination, does it matter or not? So that, again, those are, you know, no kidding. Those are the PhD level dissertations. So very simple. As long as you use this kind of idea, just to think about how many ways, you know, you know, figure out a new way to further improve, to check out the, does it matter or not, right? No kidding, that's a dissertation. So I, I would like to, to think about this, uh, try to, you know, uh, think about how can you improve the, <laughs> how to do your own research. But, that's the result. By the way, our model two, our model two from theory, at least better than model one, right? At least we allow intercept to, to, to be different. But again, actually model two is wrong because, because you have to force the slopes to be exactly the same, right? So that's why right here, model two, we still got wrong slopes. So when we try to, you know, Estimate the impact of uh, education on income. Actually, model two is also wrong, right? So, so that's why eventually we prefer model three. Model three, right here. Actually, this model three will be exactly the same if you divide your data in two groups. The first uh, subset is uh, my, uh, white collar workers. The second set, subset is uh, uh, blue collar workers. This model three, by including BC and BC times education, we allow intercept to be different. We allow slope to, to, to be different. Actually, this is exactly the same if you divide your data in two parts and run one regression for the first part, run another regression for the second part, right? So, so they're exactly the same. So of course, by doing so, you you know you need a large data. In other words, for each half, you need in, enough observations, right? If uh, 
if, for example, in the first subset, suppose you don't have enough ablation, then you may not be able to afford model three. Maybe you can only afford model two, right? That's a little detail, right? Uh, from this example, let's also learn ANOVA command. For example, let's see, we can use ANOVA command, let's say, compare model one, model three. What's our model one, model three? Model one is log income or education only, right? Our model three is BC education, BC times education, right? So right here, when we compare these two different models, first of all, our H now will be the coefficient of BC and the coefficient of BC times education. In other words, beta one, beta three, beta one and beta three, both of them are zero at the same time, right? So our H now will be beta one equals beta three equals to zero. <laughs> both of them are zero at the same time, right? Or H1, of course, at least one of them is not a zero, right? Just use the sentence. Right here, the computer command just said ANOVA model one, model three, so that our F value is 4.75. Our P value is a 0 0.01 something. This number is smaller than 0 0.05, right? Smaller than 0 0.05, so that we reject the null. Right? What's our H now? Our H now is beta one, beta three. Both of them are zero, right? We reject the null. It means at least one of them is not a zero, right? Either beta one, non zero. I, or could it be beta three, non zero? Or could it be beta one, beta three, both of them non zero, right? But at least one of them is non zero, right? So compare these two models. Of course, we prefer the second one because uh, second one contains everything, right? The first model, the first model, you know, uh, first model, the short answer is, is wrong because, because we just reject now at least one of them is non-zero, right? If you omit both model beta one and also beta three, you must omit some important stuff, right? So your model one must be incorrect, right? So in this case, in this case, the, the second model, which contains everything, looks like a true model, right? Our model one, which, which omit some important stuff, omit BC, omit BC times education. This we can call it your model, right? Again, if the second model is our true model, and uh, this model one is, we call it your model, then your model, is, which case is it? Is it over or under specification? Under specification. What happens to under specification? What's the outcome? Short answer, betas are, beta hats are wrong, right? Wrong. If you use our jargons, then, you know, we say beta hats, they are biased and also inconsistent, right? That's why we don't want to use a model one because the beta are wrong. See, in our model one, the coefficient education, this is a 0 0.018. It's wrong, right? Because the truth is, you know, model three, they're kind of like this, right? <laughs> so, so that's why model one is wrong. So we prefer the, the, the other model, right? So, so that's a computer result. We compare model one, model three. If you like, you can also use ANOVA command to compare model one versus model two, or model two versus model three, right? You can, you know, compare the two. But of course, but of course, compare model one and a model two. Uh, let's see, do I have a, do I have a result? Uh, model one, model one, model two? Um, uh, yeah, I, I do have. If you like, you can use ANOVA to compare model one and model two so that we got uh, F value, P value. This this P value is larger than 0 0.05. So our conclusion is when P value larger than 0 0.05, our conclusion is fail to reject ANOVA. What's H now in this case? Beta one, 
is a zero, right? <laughs> beta one, this kind of the difference between the two. Beta one, the coefficient is a zero. So you can say beta one equals to zero, right? Of course, opposite beta one, non-zero, right? So right here, right here, when we compare beta model one, model two, so our p-value larger than 0 0.05, so that we fail to reject now, so that we we goes to, you know, the beta one, since the coefficient right here is a zero, so that if we compare these two different models, we prefer the first model, model one, right? So keep in mind, keep in mind right here, we are comparing model one, model two. Actually, both of them, they are not <laughs> perfect models, right? Both of them, they're, so that's why when you compare model one, model two, the basic result right here, right here says basically they're basically the same, right? And so we goes to you know model one. But later on, when we, when we further consider model three, so of course, a model three is a better model, right? But besides the computer output right here, what I'm to show is uh, model one, model two, they only differ by only one beta, right? So that First of all, if you like, you can do a F test, use a ANOVA command. But second of all, since this is our special case number one, we are only testing a single beta, right? Actually, you don't have to do ANOVA. You don't have to do F test. We can do a simple, simple T test, right? How to do a T test? In the general model, in the unrestricted model right here, we simply check out the coefficient of BC. That's all, right? Since you are testing, if BC is a coefficient zero, right? In other words, let's go to model two. Check out if BC has a zero coefficient, right? Let's see, model two, model two right here. Model two, the coefficient of BC right here. See, the p-value is a 0 0.0924, 0 0.0924. It's, let's verify, right, it's, Exactly the same, 0 0.24, right? Right here, we round the, round the numbers, right? <laughs> 0 0.924, right? So we verified the two exactly the same, either a T test or, or a F test. In the first special case, if you're testing only single beta, right? Either T test or F test, we got the same result. But of course, a simple T test is much easier, right? <laughs> That's a awesome. So that's the, you know, uh, if you want to test, uh, if you want to test, you know, beta one, beta two, beta three, all three betas are zero at the same time. That's our special case number two, right? So that we can do a overall F test, overall F test in model three, so that you don't have to do any computer, you know, command. So in our model three, if you want to do an overall F test, it's already right here, right? So this one is for overall F test, testing beta one, beta two, beta three. All of them are zero at the same time. So since our p-value very small, less than 0 0.05. So our conclusion is less than 0 0.05. Right our conclusion Rejects and not, right? What's our H now in this case? Beta one, beta two, beta three, all three are zero, right? Because the zero is the same time. So we reject and not, right? So it goes to the opposite. At least one of them is not zero, right? <laughs> See, those are our exercises, right? So, so try to get familiar with this, you know, whenever you see some after I try to do this kind of exercise, you're going to do it again and again so that, uh, you know. So that's our uh, computer result. Right here, um, I uh, this is optional. So I introduce a command called effects. So there's a command called the plot all effects so that computer, but first of all, based on model three, based on the model, the most general model, right? You can use a command plot all effects so that computer automatically give us the, the crossing in the, the two fitted lines so that you don't have to manually draw first one, second one, so that you can take advantage. The computer automatically draw the two lines for us. So I just introduced this command. So you can 
you can check out all these, you know, by yourself. You know, just a model three, all effects model three, so that we got those those two much easier. Right here, multiple line equals two. This is an option. This is option. If you specify multi line equal to two, then we put these two lines in the same graph. Without the comma, without the option multi line equal to two, then the computer by default plot two graphs. The first graph is for the first line, the second graph for the second line. So, so if you prefer a single graph with both lines together, then specify multi line, you know, equals to two. That's it. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's the, we already finished chapter four. So we've already finished.